Welcome to another edition of Cocktail Hour. I'm not even going to tell you the show number because I don't care. I'm just glad you're here and I'm glad we're here and we're recording. So I'm Andy. I'm Sherry. This is show 135. It doesn't matter. Who else is here? Colette Moody. Woohoo! Yep. Woohoo! Woohoo, girl. Woo -hoo. <laughs> okay, so this is cocktail hour. What are we all drinking? Sherry, what you drinking? We're having um, cranberry juice spritzer. Very nice. Sounds refreshing. Very yes. summery. Mm hmm. Colette, what you drinking? Uh, I'm having a margarita. <gasps> On the rocks? Let's see it. Mmm, yeah. no salt on the rim and on the rocks. That's my yeah, favorite. Yep. I, I don't enjoy the salt on the rim. Me either. It's just a little overkill for me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big salt person anyway. Yeah. And I'm doing a gin and tonic, but it's not I'm sorry, gin and lime flavored club soda. Sorry, it's not tonic. Do um, you have any ice in there? No, I said fuck that ice. <laughs> I just decided to. It about just takes up space. And about that much water in it. So it's like I had 50 50. That's good. Nice. We should, this should be a really fun show in about a half hour. So yeah, if you got anything you need to do, just, you know. <laughs> so if I, fall, up. <laughs> if I fall over, I'm on the bed. Don't get nervous. Okay. No That's good to know. No bones <laughs> over. Okay. Uh, before we go on, I don't know if. If uh, either of you are aware of this, but this is the final show of our eighth year of doing Cocktail Hour. Uh, next month is officially our eighth anniversary, but you know that just means we're starting our ninth year. So this, this is uh, and and the, you know for those of you who don't know, who um, you know maybe came to the to the party late, our very first Cocktail Hour featured. Colette Moody's book. And through that, we got to know her and now we've wrangled her in and she has to be here with us every every month. <laughs> we're so lucky, really, seriously. And we really didn't give her a choice. So it's kind of like, so you're coming back, right? We got her to guest. <laughs> <on> it. <laughs> well, and you, the key, the key is to wait until the end of the show when she's drunk, you see. And then, so, so did you have fun? Ah, hell yeah, hell yeah, good, good time. Good, you're going to come back next time? Oh, sure, sure, it's fine. And then yeah, we just I, did that for a few months, and then after that it was a given that you were going to be here. I, that's probably a key to a lot of things that I end up committed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, at first, you know. well, I'm not saying <laughs> that. <laughs> good. No. Yeah. yeah. At first, wasn't it just the Christmas shows for sure? Like for like three or four years running? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, probably because the the Christmas shows ended up being like super duper fucked up. Like, <laughs> and it's a cannibal Christmas. Yay. Um, Those are still my favorite shows. <laughs> Especially like the first and second one. It was, the first one, it was just, it was just so unexpected though, you know. Who knew that murder and mayhem for the holidays would be so fun? It's you know? so delicious. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's true, and that's that's really kind of how we um, got. We've just kind of stuck with uh, the murder, thriller, serial killer, you know, for the most part. But yeah. even so, even the the nonfiction books that we've done have been murdery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a theme here. I'm getting nervous. Yeah, this and this book is no exception. <laughs> <laughs> this book is rapey murdery. You know? I found yeah. this book maybe, um, and I'm not going to say maybe. I retract the maybe. I found this book exceptionally rapey, like mm -hmm. rapey, rapey, rapey to yeah. the power of rape. Yeah, that's true. That is it true. Was a lot of rape. And it, was, uh, it wasn't just the rape that you would normally expect, but... Before we get into that, it wasn't your traditional rape. No, not not not. No, parts of it were not. Parts of it were not your traditional standard rapey rape. But we shall get into that. Okay. Before we do, you want go ahead. 
I was going to suggest that we make this somewhat spoiler free because I think this book only came out at the beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah, I was going to mm -hmm. say it is a it's a, like a super recent release. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. all right. So, what does somewhat spoiler free mean? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think anything that that happens. We'll stay at the end. Yeah, don't, from from that one part where Kai is like, <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. That so was really where. It's like, yeah. Yeah, because it does seem like there is a certain point in the story where the author kind of wants you to figure it out, right? Yeah, so yeah. that is the part that we're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I love the uh, blurb unless one of you has it handy. Uh, but I have nothing handy. <laughs> you have your drink handy. That's well, what I'm that's, saying. It's the only that's handy important. thing I've got. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I shall be the, I'll be the designated looker Reader. The looker rapper. Um, I got. I got to say, when we before we really, really talk about this book, I'm wondering, and I'm, I'm trying to juxtapose this with not giving it away, but I wonder if the author is a fan of American Horror Story. Hmm. I don't Why? know because I, I don't. I haven't watched enough of that to get the connection. Oh, okay. Th there's trials of life happening behind you. <laughs> then my cat is really excited right now. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Uh, I think it was Time Life was selling Trials of Life. It was like a video series, and it was like rams locking horns and all kinds of <laughs> nature things. Yeah, you yeah. forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. And then, then Fox morphed that into you know whatever the animals eating your children shows are. That's Fox News, right? <laughs> it could be yes I yes, yes because laura ingram can unhinge <laughs> her jaw and swallow your baby like a python i wouldn't be a bit surprised i'm pretty um, sure that and, that's true oh my god back on track with the book back on track read the summary the book is called jar of hearts by jennifer hillier yes yes okay, jennifer hillier and the uh, uh, welcome to the viewers. Um, if you have anything you want to say, just post a comment. Um, and or we'll... scream it really loudly. <laughs> Particularly if you're in a public place or, or at work. Absolutely. Right, That's right, right. right. All right. So uh, Jar of Hearts, this is kind of a long uh, long thing here. Georgina, known as Geo, is a 30-year-old rising executive when her world comes crashing down. Her high school boyfriend has been identified and arrested for a series of serial murders, including Angela, Gio's best friend in high school. Angela disappeared without a trace at 16 and her body has just been found. Now Gio is under arrest for helping her then boyfriend cover it up. And it's one of, and it's one of her other close friends from high school, Kaiser Brody, who arrests her. While Gio is sent to prison for her part, Calvin ex escapes from custody and is on the run. Gio, now 35, is about to be released from prison and try to start to try and start over. I really do, I just have to stop right here. I remember reading through this um, through this blurb the other day and just thinking if I had read this before I started reading it, I probably would not have bothered. Um, just because it's because it's clunky and there's, the grammar is fucked up, and I really dislike the phrase to try and do something. You don't try and do something. If you're doing it, then you you don't have to try. You try to do something. Okay, I'm done. All right. So, <laughs> so Gio, now 35, is about to be released from prison to try and start over. Uh, but someone has started killing people and dumping their bodies in her old neighborhood with some of the markers of the missing sweet, sweet bay strangler, her old boyfriend, Calvin. Is these killing some kind of message from Calvin? <laughs> does it really say is these? It, yes, it does. Are they some? Are they some of revenge? Proofy, <laughs> damn it! Is she herself now in danger? Everything turns on what really. Everything turns on what really happened that tragic night back when Gio and Angela were high schoolers. Everyone thinks they know the truth, but they are dark. But there are dark and dark secrets buried deep within other secrets, and it may be too late for anyone to survive the truth. Jar of Hearts is a compelling edge-of-your-seat thriller that grabs readers from the very beginning and holds them wrapped 
as the truth of both the past and the present is skillfully unfolded until the very last page. So there are secrets buried under other secrets is what it says? Uh, it says it's buried there. Within, within there secrets, yes. Secrets within other secrets. Yes. Hmm. So it's like a unicorn riding a unicorn <laughs> in a rainbow. <laughs> right? That's that, that Sean Spicer book. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. That's, he hmm. said that Trump is like a unicorn riding a unicorn. Over a rainbow. Oh my God! Now, did you watch the Samantha B? I did. Where, where they have Trump riding a unicorn, riding that a unicorn. was <laughs> magnificent. I haven't seen it yet. It was it was a pretty good one. Yeah. All right. Can I help hey, you? Where, where did you read that summary? Was that on Amazon? No, that was on Goodreads. Hi, you have oh to. Oh my go. God! All right. Well, I feel better because I was thinking, did Jennifer know they did such a shitty show? <laughs> yeah, I was well, hoping that. That's not like the blurb on the back cover. Is I they? <laughs> does they feel the danger? <laughs> I know. So, yeah. Yeah. Kitty cat's that. back. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes it's just not worth moving. Agreed. <laughs> it's just. I, I have to say, overall, I really enjoyed this story, but, you know, my, my teeth were gritted with the amount of flashbacks. And my ass was puckering with the amount of rape that was going on in this. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. all the rape. Oh, oh. I mean, to be, fair, to be fair, to be fair. Speaking of ass puckering, here's an anus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> camera placement. <laughs> um, you know, to be fair, he was a serial rapist and. I think the most jarring, well, not the most jarring, because actually several of the... Um, yeah, several of the scenes were crazy. Jesus Christ. Okay. Just give yeah. it. What have you got, pussy in your lap over there? What did you do? Right in my face. Ah! You know, normally I don't mind, but you know, I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> Goddamn cat. You're getting some tail, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think Probably the the one that um <laughs> you go away and walk and yeah. oh my god, oh god. Just don't yeah, listen for back. shit. Well, so when she's in prison fun. when she's in prison and okay, the the, the way that, that um I think the, the author did a good job of describing all of the people and uh and all of that, you know. Yeah, I mean they I really felt like I was there. And I think she did a, a if I remember correctly, I, I think she did a good job with um, with the various senses and things like that. Um, when she was raped by, I can't remember her name. Large Marge is what I yeah, remember. No, whatever, her, her prison roommate. That was really jarring to me. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I knew I, you have to know what's coming because there were a lot. There was a lot of setup to it. it was, right, and 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 you know, she had been warned by um, by her, some of her prison friends that you know, yeah, she's this is what's going to happen. It's it's coming. She may be treating you nice and all of that right now, but it's going to happen. And then it did. And I just won't forget the, her big sausage fingers in yeah, the vagina, yeah. you know, and I was, yeah. and that was the reaction I had. I was like, Oh, Oh, that's, that's awful. And it, it didn't, you know, she didn't have it last. Uh, it wasn't, I mean, it was graphic, but it wasn't as graphic as some of the other things that we've read. Right. It wasn't gratuitous either. No, I don't think it was no. uh, because it really, from that moment okay, on, well, things we'll, really changed. We'll say that that rape wasn't gratuitous, but I'm sure some of the other rapes, because there's a lot of rape in this book. Really? I mean, at was a certain there, point. How, how much, how much, what, so I'm thinking there was um, Angela's. Mm hmm. And oh, then her own, right? Knows, right, her own. Right. Then we learn that her. Right. right. Her prison rape is not the only rape. And then there is just the, the general uh, violations that she'll have with uh, other prison personnel. 
right? Oh, well, but I mean, yeah, yeah I get, I mean, I get the, the power dynamic and all yeah. of that, but she, she actually seemed to be more in control of that relationship. So to, to, to go back, because uh -huh. I know. Right. And then there is at least everybody. one uh, more attempted rape. Yes. Which was, uh, I, which I think was the most disturbing of all. Okay. The, the one that we can't talk about. Yeah. Because it's in the last portion. Because it's in that last chunk, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that was even, it, and even though it didn't, it didn't happen. To me, that 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 one made me go, oh, okay, everything about this is so fucked up, but that just took it to such a more fucked up level. <laughs> you know, it was like I, I can't, I can't even, I can't even. That, the, no. Listen, for those of you watching and then ultimately listening down the road, this show is just not about rape scenes. So <laughs> we just wanted to get the really objectionable shit, I think, out first, right? Because um, I know that this could quickly spiral into something else, which we don't want. We don't want so it. let's let's set the scene. Let's let's okay. set the scene with the opening of the book. Um, which I don't remember because it's it's been a while. Uh, how does it how does it start? Looking I think it. Forward. Yeah. Oh, it, it pretty much does start like that, doesn't it? Or doesn't no, it? I feel like that part is a flashback. Doesn't it start with her on trial? Like I think it starts with her basically taking the stand to testify against her high school. Oh, boyfriend. I think you're right. I think you're right. Right, so, and because her, at, so she is at a point in her life where she is a young corporate executive for some pharmaceutical company. She is engaged to, um, is he the CEO or the son the, of the, the CEO? The son of, the son of the CEO. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. some some muckety muck, right? Is her fiance, and he is paying for her defense, and so she's got highfalutin lawyers, and um, you know the the scene is that she is up on the stand testifying. She has taken a plea deal mm -hmm. uh, in exchange for her testimony against her high school boyfriend who killed. Her best friend one night uh, in their junior year, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, she has to admit on the stand that um, she knew that he killed her and that she aided him in disposing of the body, which they buried in pieces in sh shallow holes out in the woods behind her childhood home. I feel like they didn't, I, I feel like I went through several chapters after she had already been done in court and I didn't know, all I knew is that she had done a plea deal, but I still didn't know what her, what she had pled to. Um, Cause she only got five years. Yeah, five. And I, I just, I remember being a, a ways in thinking, well, what did she plead to? So ma either I missed it or that comes a bit later where they, you know, through, through after some well, of the flashbacks. At a minimum, she knew that he murdered her and right. she, she uh, knew that he buried her. Yes. Uh, and she knew he had dismembered her. Yeah. And I she just wasn't did sure not if... say anything. Right. I just right? wasn't sure if she actually had something to do with the murder or if it was just that she, she didn't. Well, we, she we, didn't I think we, her. at that point, I think we know that she was there. Okay. Yep. That sounds good. Yeah, more um, uh, and later. <clears throat> that is probably enough to be legal from a legal perspective as a complete non-lawyer. I, you know, I've watched mm -hmm. a lot of Perry Mason um You're totally qualified i <laughs> haven't watched any perry mason <laughs> liar exactly i was <laughs> caught in my own trap um but i mean i think that's probably enough from a legal perspective to be considered an accessory mm -hmm. to, yeah. to be present for the murder and mm -hmm. then to kn to know where the who the murderer was and where the body was buried and to say nothing, I mm -hmm. think you're an accessory. She'd have been much better off if she had to come clean when it Agreed. happened. Because you'll find out, uh, and this is, I don't think this is really a spoiler, you're going to find out as you read this book and you get toward the last third that, you know, how the murder occurred, um, 
what Gio's involvement really was. Um, <clears throat> I think because she would have, as a minor, I don't think it would have carried over into adult. You know what I mean? That she would right, really but he was he was twenty one at the time of the murder. So. Right. So um, yeah, it never happened. She never she never came up with the information on her own volition. And you know, okay. So I, I want to try to I want to try to go kind of chronologically with how everything rolled out. For Good the, luck, because there's a lot of jumping around in time. It is. So, so Leo, um, when it starts out, we we get the impression that she's you know she made it. She was 16. She made some. You know, she had some, she made some mistakes, right? Which most 16 uh, year olds do. Come on. Right. Sure. But you know what? I didn't I, kill anybody and I didn't. Right, right, right. But, but, like, but let's go, a let's mistake go. and then your friend is dead. Right. But, but I, but I mean, let's go chronological. Let's go like, as we're reading the book, so right. much is revealed through, uh, through the flashbacks and, and Andy, you know, as I was as I was listening to this, I'm just thinking Andy must be shitting herself with all these fucking flashbacks. Just yes, about. Um, I didn't. I didn't think that they didn't bother me quite as much. I'm not going to lie. There were several times when I was like, "Oh, come on! Why does why does this need to be done in a flashback? Why can't you just have this shit out in a conversation?" She's talking to other people. Let's just. Work it that way, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's that. But who, who is she going to be talking to about this, though? Right? She's flashing back, like to the night of the murder and all of the the gory details. Who is uh, that? I, I guess, who is but... that going to be revealed to? Well, uh, okay, the fine. Neighbor, the kid at KFC. I mean, mm, KFC. Well, I mean, but she, she could have had more internal dialogue with what the hell happened. I don't know. I do, I normally I hate a lot of jumping around in the timeline, and I it wasn't problematic to me in this book. And okay. I think the reason that it, I think the reason that it worked as well as it did is because there was so much about that evening, right? And mm -hmm. and evenings leading up to and directly after. Yeah, there. They're basically, it's a giant question mark when the book starts and you slowly start to glean some facts, um, but you are mostly going along sort of the present day timeline, which is Geo has just been sentenced to five years. Then you see her all through jail. Then you see her as she's released five years later. And periodically you get a flashback to the, the fucked up stuff that happened, which is you know, why she is in jail and why she didn't tell the police that she knew that her boyfriend killed her friend and assorted other things. I feel yeah. like the, you know, the, I want to jump ahead a little. Well, okay. So part, I think maybe part of the reason that the, um, the flashbacks as, as the book got moving on became more problematic for me is because they were just, they were little tiny bits like kernels. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but you know, they spit some of the shit out a little quicker. But then, I mean, but then again, everything, it was fine. It yeah, was fine. I think and it was all done in an attempt to reveal just as much as you needed to know and nothing more until and, it was and, time for you to know it. And that's something that doesn't usually happen in books. And I was impressed that I think it was like 83 or 85% into the book. And I did not have any idea um, how things were going to wrap up, right? You know, and, and as soon, as, but as soon, and I'm sure that everybody who reads this book, as soon as one, it's just like right. a, one tiny, you know, one scene, and and maybe yeah. just like one, a handful of lines in the scene, and then you're like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, there's like one piece of information that you get 85 percent in, and then you're like, oh, you know. And at yeah. that point, you pretty much, you know, I think and for the most part, I think most people, once they get that piece of information, they'll have it. Yeah. yeah. Um, they'll know of the mystery. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it was well written and it was well plotted out. Um, for me, the issue I had is that um, everybody was just so shitty. <laughs> but, but you know, I didn't think Geo. Now, now granted, I, I'm probably going to take shit for this, and that's okay. I, I look at 
Gio really felt like she was a horrible, horrible person. And, and that really, that came out more and more as the book, you know, through her inner dialogue or inner monologue. Um, you know, I'm a horrible person. I'm just like scum of the earth. I'm evil. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really see it like that. Was she nice? Was she a good person? I don't, I don't know. She, she was 16, totally um, enraptured with, um, with this 21 year old manipulative, um, abusive, abusive uh, you know, guy with, and she has no life experience at all to prepare her for, for dealing with a piece of shit guy like this. Yeah. And he had her running in circles, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought that, I thought that the author did a good job of, um, of, of laying out that abusive relationship. And um, there were a few things that I didn't, you know, when she, during one of the flashbacks, she's, you know, she was talking about, if anybody would have just asked me, I would have said, if anybody would have just said, you know, what about this? I would have come clean. Mm. And she says that like four or five times. And at that point I was just like, you're not gonna, you just should have done it anyway, but then we wouldn't have a book. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a lot shorter. It would have been, I did it. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, it. the whole, the whole concept that the protagonist is, you know, going to know who killed her best friend and where her body is buried and is not going to say anything to anybody. Um, and then she's just going to sort of move on with her life. And now I have this Range Rover and this great job and I'm engaged mm -hmm. to this sort of D-bag uh, rich guy. <laughs> he was kind of hard for me to be like i like her she has spunk yeah no um, it was I like wow that. you're a piece of shit yeah. <laughs> there was there were no real um and maybe her dad yeah but he was never her home right right he was right um one of the things that i want to get your opinion on this i felt like like when i when i got done reading and i was writing my review up um it hit me that there was there there was real no no real character development. Like I really didn't care about any of them. I didn't really know anything about how they ticked. And I mean, we should have with Geo. I mean, she worked off of guilt in some ways, but I really don't feel like maybe she, maybe they're just a bit flat. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um... Yeah, uh, I don't know. Was, this was another one of those where, I mean, the story was interesting enough. I mean, I, I was intrigued enough in trying to determine what could have possibly transpired that led to Angela's death. But um, Angela's yeah. a bitch also. She was, yeah. she was like a mean girl. Yeah. yeah. You know? she was. Although probably not so mean that she would have just let her friend rot in the ground and not say anything. <laughs> I, I don't know. She she might. She have. had she had some pros and cons. I think. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't she know. was pretty shitty. I don't. Know. She was. I didn't feel bad. I didn't. I, really? <laughs> I didn't really feel bad. Really? For Considering well, what no, happened that's, that's to her, true. you didn't feel that, bad. That, no, that's not true. I did. I did. I actually felt very bad for her. Um, when she was being raped, um, I did feel really bad for her, and and but that was the only time I felt bad for her. Even knowing from the whole time that she had been murdered, I she was just an asshole. <laughs> Again, I, she didn't deserve what she what she had happened to her. But it doesn't. I still didn't feel like oh poor Angela cut down in the prime of life. Yeah, I never felt poor Angela either. Mm -mm. How about her parents who were sending Gio I felt really bad for them. Christmas cards yeah. and, you know, and it's yeah. like, oh, well, Merry Christmas. I know where your dead daughter's buried. If only they would have asked me specifically yeah. if I knew. If they had <laughs> said something in their Christmas card, I would have told them. They totally would have told oh, them. God. It's yeah. their own fault they didn't They didn't ask. And what they about that? Ask. What about that gutsy neighbor? I threw I a sign up, beat that coffee. shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> she threw what was it, tea or coffee at, at Geo? I yeah. was not on the sidewalk. They got to, yeah. 
when Gio got out of prison, y'all, her warm her warm homecoming was having graffiti spray paint on the garage door, like did you know, say murderer or something murder, like that, or get the fuck out or something. And I think they wrote bitch on the side of her car. But I mean, mm -hmm. did that? Did we ever get resolution for who actually did that? No. Nope. They never no. said. I mean, and do we think that it was the neighbor? Because she was very angry. He was very I, angry. I, I did initially. I wondered if it was her, but by the time that whole thing was over, after the conversation with her and her husband, or if you want to call it a conversation, um, with with the angry lady, the angry lady's husband and Geo, I didn't think it was her anymore. I think it, I don't think it was her, but boy, she sure did enjoy having that done. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and she's like, "Okay, lady, I get what you're saying to me. You need to." step back and just go home and her yeah. husband's there and she's just like hey, hey, we really like your dad and you know but, yeah i can tell yeah <laughs> but I, i'm not going to stop abusing you and we don't want you here and you know how dare you do this to your father bitch he's the one who asked me to come home yeah <laughs> fucking yeah i wanted to beat the crap out of her i would have yeah, so buried her in the yard somewhere uh oh like, so even Kai, who may have been the least morally ambiguous of the main characters, right? I don't know. Um, he was boinking that married woman. Exactly, right? So he's having this affair with his partner on the police force. You know, she's married. and He was a whiny bitch. I didn't care for him at all. <laughs> so right. But he, he was the nicest, most morally upstanding of the bunch. Right, because he didn't rape anybody during the course of the book. <laughs> Their affair. I mean, I can't speak to his entire history. I only know what's in this particular <laughs> segment. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They're, they're just, there weren't a lot of really um, likable characters. And mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to get particularly emotionally vested in what happens to them when I'm like, well, you're a piece of shit and this guy's a piece of shit. And this guy's a piece of shit. And yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess the dad, but he's only in a handful of scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody else is kind of a piece of shit. Even, so. even the, the, you know, oh, I can't talk about that part. Um, yeah, everybody was a, a rotten yeah, piece of so shit. Yeah, so it's, I guess what we can do is we'll have like two groups of characters and it'll be like rapists. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a Venn diagram. <laughs> yeah. Where they intersect. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I did think the writing was good. Um, the narrator. Can we just talk about the narrator for a minute? Yeah, absolutely. I loved January Lavoie. She did and, a good job. Yeah, I had yeah. to look her up to see who she was. I guess she's on a soap opera. She's on like Days of Our Lives or something. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, uh, yeah, something. There was some. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but yeah. I mean, I'm, she just she did the voices so well. Um, he did. And, and it, everything just, I mean, it all flowed and, and, you know, everybody had their own unique voice and it, it was great. You know, a lot of times the, the narrator gets in the way, but um, this one, that was definitely not the case. Yeah. Um, all but in all, I mean, he could have done it better than she did, honestly. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. Um, all in all, I think it was, a, it was I, I had fun reading it. Um, did. Uh, it kept me it kept me involved and mm -hmm. grossed and um, grossed out. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, it was rapey. And ass, ass puckering, seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, when we, when we got done with this one, I started reading another book that I ended up quitting pretty quick because it sucked. And then I picked up um, <laughs> an earlier book of uh, Jennifer Hilliers that I also had gotten through NetGalley um, maybe a, a year or two ago that I never got around to reading called The Butcher. And I think it was a 2014 book. Okay. Um, and I quit. Oh. I couldn't, I couldn't have been, I don't know, like 20, 30% in, maybe less. Mm. Um, it was, I, I thought it was terrible. Um, mm. Yeah, and I wrote a review of it on just on Goodreads because um, I said I would, but um, 
And the narrator, the narrator made it so much worse. And then after I got done, um, I went and I looked at a few other reviews and I'm really glad that I stopped when I did, but I mean, it just goes to show. So the writing was super clunky. Um, just a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of things that as a editor and a proofreader made my, made my hair stand up and made me so angry that that was actually what made me stop is wow, you know, really? in, in one scene, you know, she just describes this, this woman who isn't an old woman uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but she was older than the 29 year old woman that she was in the scene with. And without exaggeration, there had to be at least 10. I feel like there were more instances where this woman was described as the older woman. The older woman turned, the older woman said, you know, it, use her fucking name. You know what her name is. We know what her name is. Don't describe somebody like that all the time. Just a tip. Don't, don't describe characters by, don't, don't use dialogue tags for characters by their characteristics. If you know their name. Wow. She's, uh, she's really grown in her writing. She has, uh, definitely. There were a lot of other things that, that were, um, just, just not good. Yeah. Just not good. So either either uh, either one of two things or both of these things happened. She got a stronger, better editor, mm -hmm. um, and she grew as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was really nice. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and, and write the review because there were a bunch of people who had who wrote reviews and said, "I'm never buying another book of this lady's again. This was awful." Hmm. And and then they would have missed out on, you know, those people are missing out on Jar of Hearts. Which... On all the rape. <laughs> yeah. And Cinnamon Hearts. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to miss out on all the rape. Listen, I don't think I can ever. Sausage eat fingers for everyone. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Man. So of those people that are still watching, anybody have any comments? <laughs> <laughs> no, folks are quiet. Oh, my folks God. I, like... I wonder why. Yeah, they're all shell shocked. What the? <laughs> it's certainly not the most disturbing book we've ever we've ever. No, read. it really is not. No. Um, mm -hmm. And and you know I don't. Even though there was uh, there was more than maybe its fair share of rape, uh, that I don't I don't really feel like like any of it was overly graphic. Um, there there wasn't. Um, one of the things that I did appreciate is I don't think there were, there were not euphemisms for sexual organs. I appreciate that a lot. Um, especially in a book that like this, uh, that deals with a serious subject matter. I, I think pussy or, you know, snatch or something like that is not, you know, or his cock. It, it wasn't anything like that. It was, you know, vagina mm -hmm. and penis. And, you know, because when you're describing a rape and scene. And sausage fingers. And, well, and except for that one. <laughs> but I don't think there was anything else uh, that, I don't, you know, I haven't been able to get that out of my head. Well, not, the, not the image of it, but the, just the, the way that that, 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 that sentence, um, that kind of punched me in the gut a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but I, I thought that she did a really good job, uh, and I would absolutely read the next one. Did you guys read the um, the afterward, where she talks about her, how she created this sweet bay town mm -hmm. uh, and all of that? Yes. yes. Um, yeah, that's like Castle Rock. You know, it's just not someplace you want to live. Bad no. things are, are definitely going to happen there. Yeah, I th I think in my mind, if you're going to have something traumatic in a story like rape, I think it really needs to be instrumental to the plot. Um, and I don't know that all of the rape that happened in this book would qualify as instrumental to the plot. Do you think so? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like they did, at least the ones that I remember. I think the the one in prison I think was definitely instrumental because it changed her entire. That changed the. Um, my dogs are very likely about to go insane. Um, 
it changed what? it changed her entire uh, uh, outlook on prison. It changed who she hung out with, who she dealt with, and it got her into that other line of business, so to speak, in prison. And all of that happened because what was her name, Emma uh, or Ella? One of one of those um, Emily. No, no, was it the 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 woman who who was like oh. in the business in prison? I think the one was, where Gio did a laundering money for Ella, yeah, Ella. right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, you know, because of that that rape, she got in with Ella, and through Ella, um, you know, Cat was able to get well was supposed to get out of prison. You know early and um, because Ella had made arrangements with her brother or something like that. So I, mean, I think that one was was instrumental. Um, I still can't figure out why Kat, why she brought anything to the table. I, th I think it was just an emotional, uh, it was, a, I think she was a way for us to see, um, to see that Geo was wasn't a, a horrible person. Yeah, she she was really dedicated to to helping Cat and to you know it was like it was like she hadn't had anybody that that she felt close to. She took that. She was I think she was kind of like the um, the Angela replacement. Mm. You know that maybe she wanted to you know she connected with Cat. Um, in a way that she hadn't connected with anybody since Angela. Yeah, I don't know. I still think Kat could have been left out. But then how would you have seen uh, any of Geo's caring and, and soft side? Because she well, wasn't with it. Yeah, her soft side. <laughs> but I don't really care about her soft side. But, but I think well, that that's I important. Can, because, you know. Go ahead. Maybe maybe you could see it in the next time that she was raped. Maybe there's uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're they could turn her over to her soft side and rape her that way. Oh but um, yeah, I just I don't know. I, I, I felt like so, so she was constantly saying how evil she is and how what a what a horrible person she was. And I think Cat served the purpose of showing uh, showing the reader that. Um, Geo isn't quite as bad as as what she makes herself out to be. And remember, at that point, we do we still don't know when 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 she and Cat first developed that that relationship. We still don't know to what extent Geo was involved in in Angela's murder. Right. And so, did you guys have any feeling one way or the other when? Um, characters ended up getting killed in prison not really the, you know i didn't i don't think i knew enough about the characters when sausage fingers got killed i Ooh. i was fine with that yeah that, that that felt deserving i felt a little bad for cat that she you know that she didn't make it um you know sorry for that that would be a minor spoiler but i again i don't think it matters it wasn't crucial to the to the story um who else got killed in prison i don't know i feel like there was a second person who it got was. killed it was some chick was trying to move on ellie's territory and she um oh right 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 right, that's right. right. Yeah, 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 that, that was toward the end that was right before uh that was that was like the day Gia was getting out. Yeah. Because right, everybody was on lockdown. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how much we cared about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but that was just like a blip, you know? She was introduced like the day before. Uh huh. And then she was dead. Yeah. You know? Pretty much. That's and it, yeah, wasn't really, it wasn't really tough to tell that she was going to get killed because then that, that was the only thing that she even says something like, well, I hope this doesn't mess up my. You know, mess up getting out. Right. So I don't know. I guess to me, it seemed kind of implausible not to give anything about the ending away. But um, the notion that who are you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what happened? TJ's, TJ's closing the door and then she lost her shoe. Oh. Okay. The notion that Geo is going to have any sort of semblance of being like a normal, <laughs> a normal person. Um, 
like all these people have been killed and um she is involved in some of it and like people get killed in prison because of her and i don't know it just uh i don't know i feel but, like the whole prison thing was in, in five years like that it was okay. like you know she goes to prison she gets raped within like you know like a couple weeks yeah she figures out a way to survive to to cre to make it um palatable right so that yeah. it's not mm -hmm. just a, a horrible torturous five years and then boom it's and then time the for next her day it's out. time to go Right. Yeah. But I mean, so just just kind of based on all the horrific things that she went through and then um, in some instances that she did, um, I don't know, this whole I'm out of prison now and everything's going to be good. Um, I don't know. It just seemed kind of weird, I guess, for me. I don't like, understand I don't... why she went to the bank to get a loan when she if she had that much money to put down on a house. I mean, was that, and so, so she goes to a bank that, that she's been banking. Go ahead. Hold on. This is my part right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. If y'all don't know, I work at a bank, but we're going to keep the name of the bank <laughs> out of this conversation. But I can tell you right now, regardless of what bank it is, you either, if you have enough cash to put down, right? and you have an actual history of decent credit, ain't nobody gonna turn your butt down if you can pay for it. Bring your you dad in. in jail. Even, even if you're a felon. With no yeah, job. No. Uh, well, you have to have a repayment source, right? Yeah, so she didn't have a job. If she didn't have a repayment source, them saying, no, we can't lend you money makes sense. But you can't drag your dad into that bullshit as a guarantor because that's still not supposed to work. Your primary source of repayment is supposed to be the borrower. Just throwing that out there. I don't get why she bothered going in in the first place. I need to buy a house. I have I have like what is like eighty percent or eighty five yeah. percent down. So, so fucking buy something cheaper, bitch. Then, then get a condo. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, pay cash. Right, I don't, I don't get what the point of that scene was, except mm -hmm. for her to feel sorry for herself and wronged. Yeah, well, Jennifer, seriously, come I'm on. paid. I paid my debt to society, and I made loads of money doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I turned my best friend into a piece of sausage that I buried in the backyard. Don't but... say sausage. Yeah, <laughs> more balls like full circle. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. But yeah, that whole banking thing, and it was just irritating. I got really irritated on that one. There were there were some there were some things. You know, the book was definitely was not perfect. No, um, it but wasn't. it was but it was enjoyable. Uh, it was yeah. it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, it is pouring here like torrential, like go build an ark. Yeah, I was trying to do that now here. So if it's I just flip here. out. If I blip out, that's why. Right. Yeah, here too, y'all. Just saying. Between well, my cramps and we're the rain. Mm. We are almost done. We're almost done. But, um, I mean, I would recommend the book to other folks, mm -hmm. um, but I would give them the caveat that there could be triggers <laughs> with uh, reading this book, especially all the rapey scenes. I think, um, I think any book that we talk about... <laughs> I think it should just be <laughs> just assume just, just assume like parenthetically <laughs> after the title. All right. Trigger warning. Episode one thirty five, trigger warning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should just make that a staple, seriously. It, yeah, because every book that we that we read for the most part, um no, same thing. that's that's what you tune in to cocktail hour for is we give you the down and dirty. But you know, you know what's funny though. Um, so the book that we did before this one was the Michelle McNamara book, right? No, we did Kindred. No, we did Kindred last time. Oh, you're right, 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 right. You're right. <laughs> Which was also rapey, <laughs> right? But so the the nonfiction book that we did before this. Which was about an actual serial killer and a serial rapist, yeah. did not feel nearly as rapey to me as this mm -hmm. book did. That's right. I, yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, McNamara did a fantastic job of laying out the facts and setting the scene without using any graphic detail at all yeah. and still allowing the reader to connect emotionally to um, to the victims and, mm -hmm. and the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that that was one of the things that we talked about um, when, when we did that show is uh, how impressed we all were with that. Yeah. Yep. So, um, Colette, you still recommend this one for, for fans of, uh, of the genre? Sure. Sure. I heard hesitation. There. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so like if, if we were doing stars out of five, I would probably give it three, maybe mm -hmm. a three and a half. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't super compelling. And there were many things about the story that put me off. Um, specifically all the rape and, and the just general assholiness of the, all the main protagonists. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I kept reading. I mean, it wasn't to the point where I was like, done. <laughs> Cause I've done that too. Like some other book that we reviewed once that got Sherry all mad. Did you? I, I can't even think of which one that would be. So it was Gil it was Gillian Flynn's. It book. was Gone Girl. Yeah. Oh. So did did you guys <laughs> did you guys see did you watch the movie of that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I didn't like it as much. So Andy, did you didn't watch? I saw. It, yeah, you did. I I'm didn't surprised that you saw it because well, you I didn't, hated I didn't the book. Story. No, no, no. no I she didn't read, read the book. book. She didn't she read, read the, watch book. the movie. Oh, so I, guess, I guess I then was the one who hated the book. You hated I think the book. I got like over halfway before I could not deal with those people anymore. Mm -hmm. That was the big <laughs> issue that you had with the book was <laughs> that uh, there were uh, everybody, every everybody single was character so was awful duplicative and unlikable and yeah. i was like i just want to mentally put them on a bus and drive it off a cliff and then <laughs> andy read like 10 pages and said oh i don't know oh, i can't do it <laughs> really I, she yeah. didn't, literally i could not go past like 10 20 pages whatever it was i'm like oh my god no as soon as right. as soon as you got to the part where you're like, oh well, she is this, and, <laughs> and then, you know what else do I have to do? And because I remember Colette and I were like, yeah, you were supposed to know that, and then <laughs> and well, then I everything do, else rolls out. I do remember Andy telling me like right before the show started, like, yeah, girl, you're gonna have to uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to carry you're this gonna one. have to carry the the weight on this one because I I did I couldn't get through the book and I was like oh shit because I knew that I didn't get through the book either I was like wow this is not gonna be a good show it ended up being okay though I think <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah probably yeah. it yeah. wasn't yeah it wasn't terrible it was definitely wasn't the worst show we've done <laughs> so you guys want to have a laugh go back and look at the the uh, Gone Girl review <laughs> yeah. um, so we do have our next book we should start rolling it up wrapping it up we do yes but we don't pick a date yet but we do have the book in mind yes so if um if you guys if anybody's interested we're going to be doing a uh, another nonfiction, <laughs> and this one's a really light-hearted uh wrong <laughs> yep. it's, it's called um, damnation island poor sick mad and criminal in the 19th in 19th century new york <laughs> Um, it would be very uplifting. It is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I'll just skip to the last part. Or to, it, there's a, oh, for history fans and for anyone interested in the ways we care for the least fortunate among us, Damnation Island is an eye-opening look at a closed and secretive world. And who isn't up for that? I know, right? In a tale that is exceedingly relevant today, the author shows us how far we've come and how much work still remains. Mm. So um, we'll be we'll be listening to that. Uh, if anybody's got a Scribd account, because I love Scribd, um, and I don't mind telling everybody. Um, yes, and, yes, and you can I listen. Find that finally. Yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming that there that Nellie Bly should be 
So oh, yeah, yeah. There. It says um, Stacy Horn uh, has crafted a compelling and chilling narrative told through the stories of the poor souls sent to Blackwells, as well as the this periods, cities of city officials, reformers, and journalists, including the famous Nellie Bly. Yep. Oh, awesome. I'm really yep, looking yep. forward to this read. Good. I'm really, really glad that Colette found it. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. um, that makes me think of uh, when Laura Dern played Nellie Bly in Drunk History. Wow. Yeah. Andy, have you have you watched Drunk History? No, I've heard you Rachel should. Spangler you... talk about it. Huh? I've heard Rachel Spangler talk about it though. It oh. is a work of art. Oh yeah. my god. You you need you, to yes. go and stream them all because <laughs> all they're That's brilliant. Yes. Oh they are fantastic. <laughs> all right. And you never know that the stories are great, but you also never know what the, what the guest is going to do because they are seriously blasted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're pretty funny. Even the kid all right. watches. All right. all right, I'll check it out. Yeah. So, um, uh, so we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing this. Um, mm -hmm. And we could probably pick a day. I mean, Colette's got her calendar right there. I do. I have my old lady paper calendar. <laughs> I love, it. I love it that you call it the old lady paper calendar. Yep. Oh my, the old lady paper calendar. So, um, I think I would be good with, maybe, I don't know, this is a weird one, because we can go the 8th or the 15th. I think I would be, I think I would feel better with the 15th. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. So oh, wow, that was easier. Done. You know Done. Ba -boom, you know, now that we do these in the middle of the day on a Saturday, it's, you know, it doesn't, it just. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll be, we'll there's be discussing. A, there's less of a degree of difficulty. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, so on September 15th, join us. We'll be talking about Damnation Island. Um, and also I just, in case anybody's feeling ultra generous, um, our URL, our URL cocktailhour.us, is due for renewal, uh, and it costs us twenty bucks. Um, so, if anybody wants to do a donation, um, you can you can absolutely do that. I will um, I will put a link to our PayPal. I'm gonna write that and put link to <laughs> PayPal uh, in the in the YouTube thing here. Nice. Uh, there's already information about that on the website on the side if you cool. are interested. If not, that's fine. You can still you can still watch and listen without. Um, we'll be without around. Kicking in. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. So we're kicking off. So next next month will be our our anniversary show. We started in September of 2010. Isn't that amazing? Don't you have a birthday next month, Sharon? I have a birthday this month. This month. It is the, the 28th. I will be the big 5 0. <gasps> what? You better write that shit down. What the hell? Hold on. I'm looking. The 25th? 28th. The 28th. Oh, <laughs> well, there you are. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. There you are. <laughs> and she types furiously. I better, <laughs> I better hurry the hell up with what I'm doing. I know. I'm very excited. Andy's making me a special treat for uh, I am. my own two hands. Oh, shit. Sure. Bring it in. It's raining. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't bring it in. And it's raining. Well, we're wrapping up now anyway. So it'll just, <laughs> it'll just be extra <laughs> special. MG. It's getting waterlogged, y'all. I got to go. <laughs> okay. What? All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>